You've all had this problem. Someone finds out you're colorblind and they immediately ask you what color something is. But it is your duty as a colorblind person to mock that silly question and try to give them as precise an answer as possible. Today on Chromophobe, color identifying apps as well as chromatic adaptation. The premise of these apps is pretty simple. You point your phone camera at a color that you are uncertain of and your phone, the app, will tell you what color it is or rather what color it would appear to be to a color normal trichromat. So if you want to know, hey, what color is that kid's belt and can I take him? This app will help you realize it doesn't matter. Of course you can kick your ass. There are a number of these apps on Android and iOS and in this video I'm going to be using the Android app Color Grab, which is what I use personally. I tried to contact the developer of this app before I shot this to ask them some questions about it, but of course when they saw in the message, hi, I'm a YouTuber with 116 subscribers, they didn't bother responding. So this, uh, this video is not an ad, despite my best efforts. Color Grab is a freemium tool in the Play Store, so if you are one of the 8% of my viewers who watches on a computer, then I recommend you pull out your phone now, install Color Grab so that you can play along through the video. So once we start up the app, it immediately starts up the camera and you can see the little circle in the middle is the color picker. Whatever the average color of all the pixels within that color picker is, is re-represented at the top of the app where you see a square filled with that color, as well as the hue name, which is the general hue name, yellow, blue, red, uh, an RGB value, an HSV value, and the connoisseur name of that color. In fact, if we just scan over this image of a bunch of yellow colored pencils, you can see all sorts of dumb connoisseur color names that shouldn't exist, like Witch Haze, Supernova, Turbo, and Kornikova, which, don't get me wrong, is all very poetic, but let's be honest, us colorblind people don't have much use for these kind of color names, unless you have some colored normal who's asking you what color their skin is, and you can tell them, oh, your skin is so Kornikova, Supernova which they might take as a compliment, but what you really meant was, dude, you look a little bit jaundicey. It's a pretty simple concept, right? Then why are there all these buttons? Well, I'm gonna put some numbers by each one of these buttons in the overlay, and you can correlate that to explanations in the description because the app developer didn't think that they needed to make any documentation for this app, but we're also going to be discussing these two buttons in the bottom specifically. The problem with these apps is the color that the camera detects is not necessarily the true color of the objects. So allow me to digress into a little bit of theory, and, and you might want to pay attention because this is going to be pretty important in the explanations of Enchroma glasses that will be coming out in the next few videos. Let's say you have a white piece of paper and you shine a white light onto it. Well, you're going to see a white piece of paper. But if you change that white light to a blue light, now you're going to see a blue piece of paper. And that's because the color that reflects off of an object is a product of the color of the object itself, its reflectivity, as well as the color of the illuminance. Illuminati! No! No dumb jokes on this channel. The illuminant is the light source shining onto an object, and that illuminant has a color of its own. For example, we've all had those friends that thought that having their apartment lit with a bunch of colorful LEDs somehow made them a more interesting person. When they fill their house with purple light, for example, everything looks purple, but due to a human phenomenon called color constancy, our brain knows that those things are not actually purple. And with time and another human phenomenon called chromatic adaptation, your visual system will correct for that purple illumination or cast over what you're seeing, and your brain will start to perceive less and less purple. But even white light, such as daylight or that from a standard light bulb, actually represent very different colors that are described qualitatively by their warmth or quantitatively by their temperature, be it 2300 Kelvin or 6500 Kelvin, where the higher the temperature, the cooler the light is, which is super frustrating. In real life, your brain uses all sorts of tricks and clues to try and figure out what the color of the illuminant is, such as if you're inside or outside, if the light is direct or indirect, uh, using the color distortion of your hands or another well-known object, then it uses those clues to subtract the assumed illuminant color from your perception in real time. But when you're looking at an image, that context can be completely missing. And not to beat a dead horse here, but that's exactly what happened in 2015 during Dressgate, hashtag the dress. 
There wasn't enough information in the picture to figure out the color of the illuminant, and so people had to make their own assumptions about how the dress was lit for the picture. And of course, people ended up assuming very different lightings of this dress, which caused them to perceive the colors as different, from hashtag blue and black, to hashtag white and gold, or in my case, hashtag purple and brown, because hashtag colorblind. <laughs> The intricacies of human chromatic adaptation are still a well-researched topic, but computers have been able to do the same thing for years in, in digital cameras and image editing software with a tool called white balance. White balance is essentially equivalent to chromatic adaptation, where a computer will try to compensate for a colored illuminant by adjusting the colors of an image. Take for example a picture that was shot under a warm yellow light. If you apply a white balance to this, it subtracts the warmth and it shows you the true colors of that image, or rather, what that image would look like if it had been shot under a neutral light. The problem is, computers can't know the color of the illuminant used to take this photo unless you tell them, and they also lack color constancy to know what is normal for any of the context in the image because they don't know what's in the image. So if you tell a computer or a camera to auto-white balance an image, it will try to pick out parts of that image that should be neutral or, or white and adjust the colors of the entire image accordingly. But the auto-white balance tool of a, of a camera or a computer can often do a pretty crappy job at this, completely distorting the colors of your image. And if you need to use that image to determine the color of an object in the image, well, that's bad. <laughs> But there are two solutions for manually white balancing an image, both of which are present in Color Grab, and you should be aware of them if you want to accurately determine the color of something in the photo. First, the easy way is to directly tell your camera what type of illuminant that you're in, be it direct sunlight, cloudy daylight, warm incandescent light, or slightly colder fluorescent light. All of these illuminant types are associated with a pretty precise temperature of light, and your camera can do the rest. If you don't know what your illuminant is, you can always find yourself a white reference, which nine times out of 10 is going to be a piece of printer paper, but I have also used a piece of gum, pre-chewed gum. So you take your color picker circle, you aim that at your white reference, and then you cycle through the presets in the bottom right until you find the one that has the lowest saturation when aimed at that white reference. Now, assuming that you stay under the same light where you took the color reference, you can move around and measure colors like normal. Alternatively, there is the accurate method, where you find the preset with the lowest saturation to your white reference as before, but then you click on the scales to switch to a white balance mode that requires you to always have a white reference. A square then appears to the side of your color picker, and whenever you measure a color, that square must be filled with your white reference. The colors of the image are then modified until that white reference appears truly neutral white, i.e. 0% saturation, and the color in the color picker is then your true color to be measured. All right, let's give this a try. My wife is a psychopath because she bought a bunch of color pencils that have no labels on them, which she absolutely should know is every colorblind person's worst nightmare. First step, I'll put all the colored pencils onto a white piece of paper. Second step, I will turn on the flashlight of my phone through the app because the more light is on the object, the more accurate this method is going to be, especially when you're using this direct white balancing method. Third, I find the illuminant preset that brings the piece of white paper closest to white because I don't know what color my phone's flashlight is. Fourth, click on the scales to switch to white referencing mode and make sure that the white fills the square, the color to be determined fills the circle, and that neither of those are in the shadow of the other one, and presto, you have accurate colors. So we have red, pink, orange, green and brown. And if you notice with brown in the hue section, it doesn't say brown, it says red, brown, or brown, orange. And that's because brown doesn't have its own hue. It is just a shade of either red or orange. Unfortunately, you have to use the connoisseur colors or the HSV values to really make a judgment call about whether the color you're looking at is brown or red. Then we have beigey peach, green, dark blue, and a slightly lighter dark blue which you'll see in the hue actually says blue or violet. And that's because when you digitize a color, uh, just by looking through a digital camera, your camera cannot measure violet. It will always measure a violet as blue. So once a color has been digitized, if it were violet, nobody will ever know. So while my wife tells me that this is violet, and if I look up the serial number on the manufacturer's website, they tell me it's violet. 
Once this goes through a digital camera and becomes a digitized color in RGB, everyone, my wife, the app, myself, we all see this as navy blue. Are these apps useful? Absolutely. Are they infallible? Absolutely not. And that is exactly why my wife still buys my clothes. This is Chromophobe. Oh boy, I gotta work on my tan.